Well, hello there, YouTube. See that fence? Remember what I said yesterday night about the whole place being totally, you know, disorganized? I wasn't kidding. Just fell this pine tree. Get a little bit of firewood. People are building something over here, and I just settled over here. <laughs> Let me try to put this somewhere, somewhere, in focus, up. I hope you can see me. Hello there, YouTube. Having a semi-well-deserved, deserved, semi-well-deserved smoke. After getting a tree. <laughs> okay, this video will be very, very short because I don't know how much more my phone can stomach. So, this one is a video response to one of the questions I was asked during my giveaway. Mm. By the way, smoking my Missouri Mirsham Little Devil Acorn with Fire Dance Flake. I think this will actually be my rotation from now on. Anyways, this particular question was asked by Bean Piper, who by the way refused the giveaway. He just asked me the question for the sake of supporting me and supporting the YTPC, which I think is great. He asked me a classical question. Uh, if I could choose and there's a cat over there. It's a local, you know, semi-wild cat. <laughs> and now he's... she wants a hug. And I am allergic to cats. <laughs> Anyways, Bean Piper wanted to know if I could have a pipe with a historical figure, past or present. Who will that be? Well, that's pretty simple for me. If I could choose, that'll be <laughs> Professor Tolkien. <laughs> kind of a vanilla answer for a guy like myself, you know, who listens to heavy metal or... Is, is the cat in frame? <laughs> Kind of a vanilla answer, but you cannot underestimate the impact Tolkien had on, you know, world literature and on life, on the life of this very YouTuber in particular. Besides, he's a documented pipe smoker who couldn't, you know, he was rarely seen without a pipe. I actually have a, I think there was an article something in, somewhere in either smokingpipes.com or I don't remember, I'll, put, I'll find it, put a link in the description that documents his uh, pipe smoking habits, if you, you could say that. It's not sure, but people are guessing that he was primarily uh, a downhill pipe smoker because uh, he started smoking around World War One, and uh, at that time downhill was selling sort of a you know, relaxation packages for soldiers departing to the front so Tolkien probably bought this and as far as tobacco goes uh, I think his son Christopher uh, confirms and uh, that he, his father preferred navy flake and uh, there are actually tins found throughout Tolkien's house because he kept some small 
you know, nails and whatnot in the empty tobacco tins. Too bad I don't know what, which one. <laughs> but uh, myself, I came into contact with Tolkien from a from a guy who was actually a bit of a jerk, really. But he, despite being a jerk and uh, you know, son of the rich parents, he told me about heavy metal, <laughs> and he told me about Lord of the Rings, and uh, some years passed and my mom actually bought me a very very crappy uh, edition of Lord of the Rings but the translation was I think the best Russian translation that there is where half of the names are changed half of the names of the titles of the places are changed and the orcs are actually swearing using you know mighty Russian language <laughs> So that's how I became addicted to fantasy genre and I was sort of a semi involved with uh, live action role playing community in Russia which is which was uh, in the 90s pretty hardcore let me tell you that no. although I didn't go to games but I spent my time you know, brandishing a wooden sword around in the wood. <laughs> from there I went to tabletop games to Warhammer, which I learned about from the same jerk, by the way. <laughs> and then eventually I went to, into medieval reenactment and then dumped everything, and here I am again. Still wanting to do a, uh, you know, Dunedain, you know, ranger costume, by the way. Now with a pipe, <laughs> a suitable pipe. But anyways, Lord of the Rings is the book I have. At any given day, I have it on my phone or on my i iPad, and I'm almost constantly reading through parts of passages because I just love the language and I love the plot. Although I'm not a fan of the, you know, the epic part of Lord of the Rings, I love the first book, you know, Hobbits going through some difficult terrain, being terrified of the Black Riders that, you know, are pursuing them. I like the movies, you know, the first trilogy. That was great, in my opinion, because it showed the you know, the amount of work people did on uh, the source material is just amazing. The Hobbit trilogy, you know, not so much, but still pretty enjoyable. Actually, if I could uh, have a pipe with Professor Tolkien, I would uh, try to persuade him to watch at least the Lord of the Rings trilogy with me. Although he would probably be terrified of the adaptation and he will be disappointed and he will harass Peter Jackson to no end. With everything starting from the age of Frodo, who is, you know, sort of a middle-aged guy in the book and pretty young Elijah Wood in the <laughs> film. So there you have it, there's a just short answer to a short and classic question. If I could have a pipe with any, anybody from past to present, that will be John Ronald Rowell Tolkien, <laughs> one of the greatest writers of the 20th century. Thank you very much for dropping by. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're watching this, if you watched my last video, you may, I assure you that I passed a, well, rather pleasant night. 
the three blankets did the trick. I wasn't cold, and uh, I'll be going back to Moscow. I'll try to upload both of these videos today. Once again, I wish you a very, very pleasant work week, if a work week can be pleasant. <laughs> And I will be back soon with you with more videos. Thanks again very much for dropping by. See you people. Goodbye. There's a cat, by the way. Vasya, Vasya! Ain't she cute? Mm-hmm. <laughs>